hot, 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 staying alive. Hello everybody, Dr. Ryan here, board certified specialist internist. Today we're discussing the hot topic of fever of unknown origin. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for guys? So parixia of unknown origin or fever of unknown origin, there's 30 whopping causes divided into infectious, non-infectious slash inflammatory, then there's malignant causes and others. <clears throat> so under infections, we can divide them into an occult abscess. <clears throat> TB is the master of disguise, especially in immunocompromised people, but also immunocompetent people must obviously always be born in the differential diagnosis. Endocarditis, so you look for those peripheral stigmata. You know, you get your immunological and your vasculitic phenomenology, your rod spots, your osseous nodes, your GMA lesions, your splenomegaly, your hematuria, your murmur, right? Osteomyelitis as well, viral infections, not forgetting COVID, right? Zoonoses, uh, and there you have it. Inflammatory causes of fever stills disease. And your tip off there would be a very high ferritin, all right? Rheumatoid arthritis, so you know the symmetrical polyarthritis, the predilection for the small joints of the hands. And then, of course, you get the lesion clinical manifestations affecting various other organs as well. Systemic lupus erythematosus, the wolf, oh, Right, reactive arthritis, sarcoidosis, vasculitis, polymyalgia, rheumatica, inflammatory bowel disease with the two cousins, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, as well as familial Mediterranean fever. Malignant causes can be first up hematological, being classically the poster kids for that is lymphoma, leukemia, myelodysplastic syndromes. So we'll be taking a quick look at those in subsequent slides. And solid tumors, being renal cell carcinoma, termed the internus tumor because of its many manifestations, metastatic carcinoma, colon cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, atomixoma. Other issues that can cause fever can be drug induced, right? It can be venous thromboembolism. Right, it can be alcoholic hepatitis, it could be factitious hematoma, or part of an endocrinopathy. Here's a beautiful cartoon depicting Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you so much to our colleagues at midcomic.com. Right, so Hodgkin's lymphoma is by and large a clonal B cell malignancy that develops within the lymphatic system. Uh, the malignant Reed Sternberg cell, the infamous Reed Sternberg cell, typically has a bilobe nucleus that gives you an owl's eyes appearance. There's something wrong with you, <laughs> as it is termed like cell. Actually, uh, diagnosis is by excisional lymph node biopsy, and that we can see here, right? It, the lymphoma spreads in an orderly fashion to adjacent nodes. Um, classically, it gives you painless lymphadenopathy, constitutional B symptoms, being fever, which is our topic today, night sweats, weight loss, pruritus, and hepatosplenomegaly. Another beautiful mid-comic here showing us acute lymphoblastic leukemia and some most common pediatric cancer. So if you have a young child who presents with fever, you're not sure why, always be on the alert. This could be acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Classically presents with bleeding, infection, lymphadenopathy, and fever. It represents a clonal proliferation of neoplastic immature lymphoid cells. We have lymphoblasts in the bone marrow or peripheral blood. That's your tip-off. When you do your smear, you're going to see these lymphoblasts, right? Uh, and it's very painful because it leads to bone pain, right? Uh, versus acute myelogenous leukemia, which is a malignancy involving the myeloid line of precursor cells. And the tip of there is you get over 20% blasts in the bone marrow, and the classic finding is the hour rod, right? Uh, typically affects adults greater than 65 years of age, okay? And typically what you get is leukostasis, CNS symptoms, and DIC, disseminated intervascular coagulation. My friends, please allow me to speak a little bit about making spiritual progress. This is taken from the work of Dr. S. Y. Gamda, blessed man of God. Thank you so much. Right, so areas in which one can progress spiritually is P, personal attributes, personifying the nature of Christ, actively, <coughs> me, actively pursuing Christ in all things, right? Mm, royal priesthood functions. You realize that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a people sanctified and set apart to declare the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. O is overcoming the enemy and overcoming sin and overcoming the world. Romans 8.37 says we're not just overcomers, but we are more than overcomers through Christ who strengthens us. Grace, you are dripping with grace. You're always sharing into people's lives the goodness and the mercy of God. You're always approachable. You're always loving. R is relationship with God, drawing close to God and realizing that we can do nothing without him. The Bible says that we are just merely the branches and Jesus is the vine. Apart from him, we are nothing. 
And so we have this selfless reliance on God. E is an example. We set an example for others in our life, in our character, in our personality, in our conversation. S is spiritual knowledge, which comes through purity of heart. The Bible says only the pure in heart will see the Lord. And if you are pure in your heart, you will see God in the scriptures and increase your knowledge of his word. S is spiritual fruit. We've been through this Galatians 5.22. God bless you. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you soon with another rapid review in internal medicine. Have a lovely day. Thank you.